This is an exclusive hands-on review of the brand new NFE drone from Parrot. It features 4K HDR video, three axis image stabilization, ultra portable, 25 minute flight time, and a whole lot more. Now I'm Ben from All Authentech. Let's check this drone out. Now first up, my full disclaimer, huge thanks to Parrot for sending me this sample unit before public release, but no, this video is not sponsored. They just sent me the drone. And remember, Parrot is one of the biggest competitors to DJI in the world market, and I believe competition is healthy for us consumers. Now without further ado, let's jump right in. Package contents includes the NFE drone with one battery, remote controller, a 16 gig micro SD card, USB cable, and eight additional spare props. First impressions right off the bat. I was super impressed with how lightweight this drone is, and there's still nice attention to details like low rubber feet on the skids, or the batteries are rechargeable via USB type C. I really like this convenience and efficiency from here, or I can charge it out on the go with a battery bank. Also cool, it's quick and easy to fold and unfold. Each wing pops into place, and unlike other drones out there, there's no order in which you need to open or close some before others. It's a small detail, but nice. And on that note, I'm working on a full in-depth side-by-side -side comparison video of this drone versus the DJI Mavic. Air. Stay tuned for that one coming soon. The included carrying case is nice quality, well padded inside, and the drone fits in there perfect. Unfortunately, there's no room for the controller, but not a big deal. It's semi-small as is. The transmitter feels good in hand. Both left and right rubber sticks are spring-loaded to center. Up top, there's plenty of buttons for taking photos and video, tilting the gimbal, and more. The cell phone clamp is pretty cool design with Wi-Fi antenna built in. Once you flip it up, it auto turns on the controller and then you just simply slide in your phone. The USB-C cable includes for connecting your phone to the transmitter and from in the app you control your camera and other settings. More on all this shortly. Now let's go out for my first test flight. windy out here but they say it can withstand some good winds we got some nice blue sunny skies First flight hit 2%, auto landed. That is mighty close to the water. Thank you, Jesus. We can fly another day. So we pop phone out, disconnect, power off drone, pull down. My first impressions at PV feet never cut out. That's huge. There's two main flying mode, film mode, where all the controls are slow and precise. It's really nice for getting your uh, shots. I also was in sport mode a lot and it is fast. I maxed out most of those settings and it whips around fast. I tried 4K video with and without HDR. Portability and compactness is nice. I was able to unfold and get in the air fast and battery life lasted pretty long. Not sure if it was 25 minutes, but I was out there for a while. Here's some of my first flight impressions. Precision and finesse in the transmitter is really nice. Even in sport mode, I was able to capture some really cool cinematic looking shots. The horizon level was a little bit wonky and giving me a bit of troubles, but 
thankfully uh, we can tinker with gimbal calibrations in the settings. Battery life's actually really good too. They rated up to 25 minutes of flight time. And looking at my time codes, I took off at 1.49 and final landing at 2.15, which is 25 minutes exactly. However, I did land once or twice with short breaks, so actual flying time is a bit shy of that 25 minutes, but it was extra windy out there, and overall, it's an impressive amount of flight time for just one single battery. One last thing I noticed, which is actually pretty huge, this drone is quiet, and I mean super quiet when flying. This is fantastic to be subtle and discreet wherever you're at, not bothering any neighbors or pedestrians. It also just sounds less scary and intimidating. There's a lot to cover on this drone, actually a whole lot more than I actually thought. For example, their new Free Flight 6 app has a ton of customization settings and smart shooting modes all for me to experiment with, so make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell to be notified when I post my super in-depth testing review of this drone, the camera, the app, and more. Now let's quick cover some of those main specs and features of this NFE drone. 4K HDR video. This is one of, if not the first drone that I know of that shoots video in HDR, and that's really cool to see. HDR feels like the new 4K trend. Max video bitrate is 100 megabits per second, which is great, and it can record 4K cinema video as well. That's 4096 by 2160. Here's some test footage of HDR turned on and off, and you can clearly see the differences. I like how there's a lot more details maintained, for example, in those bright highlights of the sky. And yes, remember all this footage is straight out of camera, no editing applied. However, it seems way oversaturated in some other shots as well. In lower light conditions, like the sunset for example, the HDR seemed to jack up the noise and grain quite a bit with that processing. At least the sunset and the skies and reflections in the water look really splendid. I'll keep experimenting with this. When I turn HDR off, we can see a bit of that noise is removed and the image looks a bit more standard, but still nice and usable. The camera also features 21 megapixel photos and in my test shots they look good. Nice color reproduction and sharpness. It's a great aspherical wide angle lens with an f2.4 and 69 degree horizontal field of view and this is to help limit lens flares and less image distortion. If I zoom way in and we do some pixel peeping, we can notice the details look a bit muddy and grainy, but I think this is pretty standard, and normally I'm never zooming or cropping in this close. A big feature to talk on, bit of a controversy, the gimbal. Now they're smart and marketed as a three axis image stabilization, which technically it is, but the gimbal is only two axis, tilt and roll. However, sadly, the yaw or pan axis is not gimbal stabilized. Instead, it relies solely on EIS or electronic image stabilization. Now, I normally dog on EIS, and of course, it's not as optimal as gyro stabilized, but in some shots and testing, especially when you flip your speed controls into film mode, I could capture some really nice and smooth panning and dolly tracking shots. I couldn't tell the difference. In other times though, yes, especially if you whip left and right fast, there's some stuttering in the footage and it can look a bit jittery. I just think it's a camera limitation that we'd have to learn the workarounds for. Like I said, filming in film mode, not sport mode, that'll help a ton. On a positive note for that gimbal, another feature I've never seen on a consumer drone before. The gimbal allows you to tilt down 90 degrees and up 90 degrees as well. This opens up a whole world of creative shooting perspectives and fresh ideas not possible before. Even when flying max speed, full tilt ahead, there's no props in the shot. This is really great to see. I tried a little test, I flew under some trees and looked straight up and it was almost trippy. I've been flying drones for years and never been able to look straight up while flying. It's very cool and I'm excited to see the creative uses people will find for this feature. The camera also features what they say is a 2.8x lossless zoom. Now I tried this with one photo, zoomed in and out, it seemed to just crop in on the sensor. The photo res is smaller on the zoomed in shot, so I'll probably just be sticking with full frame photos myself. For video, however, they say we can have lossless zoom capabilities for 4K UHD up to 1.4x and up to 2.8x at 1080p. 
It also has that feature of vertigo effect. You know when you're pulling back but zooming in, it's a very cool and unique feature. They say each drone leg contains a dual band antenna, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. With optimizing HD video transmission, we can fly up to four kilometers or two and a half miles away. So far in my testing, the video feed has been really good, especially for Wi-Fi. There was just once it hiccuped a smidge when I was way across the lake, approximately 1,000 feet away. I'll keep testing this, so stay tuned. Also, sport mode is crazy fast. Seriously, this drone rips through the air, which is a lot of fun to fly. They say it can hit up to 33 miles per hour or 55 kilometers an hour. My official radar gun speed test coming soon. Now, I also just got back from flying that Anafi and a big storm rolling in. The wind gusts were ripping hard and this drone held its position like a champ, angled like this. They say it can handle wind resistance 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. Now, there are some negatives and wishlist items I found. No drone is perfect, unfortunately. Here's what I found so far. I wish it had that third axis gyro gimbal for image stabilization. This would be cool to see maybe in their next model. Remember when I was talking about how much I love that bats are charged via USB type C? Well, I still really like that. However, as a downfall of that system, recharge times seem to take a lot longer, like two to three hours for a full recharge. In comparison, a Mavic battery, for example, recharges in about one hour. Again, stay tuned for that full comparison video coming very soon. I found this little design flaw in the transmitter phone holder. When I clipped my LG V30 into the clip, my phone kept slipping or popping out of the holder a few times actually, kind of dangerous. In my opinion, the top rubber grip needs a little lip to keep the phone held in tight, kind of like seen here. And of course, the issue is exasperated with the phone case. I wish the drone had obstacle avoidance. These provide a whole level of flying confidence and protection, especially for beginners getting into drone flying. And lastly, in the app, there are are free smart features like return to home, cameraman, and other fun shooting modes. It actually worked great in my first test. I'll be showing all those in my next video, but there are some in-app purchases required to unlock, like advanced follow me mode and flight plan, which I wish were free and included. I heard some of these aren't allowed in certain countries. I didn't know that. And the other reason is so that they can keep the price down on the drone package itself. I understand where they're coming from. I myself might not even use those features, so it's not a big deal, but it's just one of those things you kind of wish was free. So price on the Anafi drone is $6.99, and it comes out on July 2nd. All links down below. This could be a great compact, lightweight drone that still has awesome camera for photo or video enthusiasts. Make sure you stay tuned for my side-by-side -side comparison and in-depth testing vids coming soon. Thank you all for watching and making it this far. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts down in the comments. And until next time, let's live authentic.